Star Wars. Two words that I'm sure more than a few people are sick of hearing. But honestly, how can you not wrap yourself in the excitement? What a time to be a Star Wars fan. I've never seen so much outpouring love for a movie series, and Star Wars deserves it. It's a classic and wonderful story that transcends time and space. It's the power of creative filmmaking put to good use. I've talked about Star Wars a little bit in the past, and I've also defeated the evil Darth Professor trying to see the new one, but I wanted to lay out my thoughts on the entire series. The originals, the prequels, the new trilogy, the spin-offs, and the future in general. So here we go! The first movie that kickstarted the entire adventure. You don't need me to tell you it's good. Really, there's nothing else in this video that I can say that anybody else on the planet hasn't said. So I'll put my spin on it. I didn't grow up with this movie. I was never a Star Wars fan when I was a kid. My father was, and he had the original VHS collection. All I remember was being scared by that image of Yoda on Return of the Jedi. Around the time I hit my teenage years, I wanted to watch Star Wars because James Rolfe told me to. But I was confused. I didn't understand why I shouldn't start with number one. Isn't that where, you know, things start? Well, as I did more research, I understood why it's numbered like that, and I watched the original trilogy with my dad. And I thought it was... good. I wasn't blown away by it, and honestly, I think it's because I didn't pay attention. As the years went on, I tried more often than not to rewatch the whole series, but it wasn't until I got into my college years that I really started to appreciate these movies, and now I'm in love with them. The original Star Wars is a cultural achievement in filmmaking, storytelling, and creativity. It inspired an entire generation to tell stories and to create their own adventures. It's a tale as old as time with the little ragtag team of good guys against the big monstrous evil bad guys, but it's handled with such love and affection. The characters are all individual and unique, the music is some of the most beautiful compositions of the 20th century, the action is fun and jam-packed, even something as simple as the color of the film. It's always fun to look at. The first movie is a good movie, dammit. And if they ended it there, it would have been a satisfying dinner. But then George Lucas came in with this triple chocolate meltdown cake of a movie and said, It gets better, you bitch. Empire Strikes Back is one of the greatest films ever made. It's brave filmmaking. It's a movie that doesn't hold itself to the regular norms of a film. It doesn't begin with the usual act one structure of introducing a character and scenarios, and it doesn't even end with a satisfying closure. The twist was one of the most mind-blowing things ever to be put on the big screen. The new characters, how could they top Chewie and R2-D2 and Shrek? Simple, Yoda, Boba Fett, the Imperial Walkers, etc. It introduces fresh new concepts while also executing old, familiar classic filmmaking, but it somehow feels so fresh, so new, and so beautiful. The music is even better, the action is heart racing, and the pure emotion radiates from the characters. Every single shot has something interesting to look at, and it's clear that they cared about what was being shown. That one shot of Darth Vader's silhouette as Luke comes closer to face him? You can write books about why these shots just work. It's the kind of movie that utilizes every aspect of what you're seeing and hearing to further the story. There's no bad editing or sloppy lighting, nothing that just doesn't work. Nothing that's not important. How can I explain this? You know, a movie like, I don't know, Chappie. It just has shots. The movie just happens and, and then it's over. It becomes apparent that the only thing that's telling the story is the script. Empire uses everything to tell its story. The color scheme, the music, the editing. It's clear that genuine thought and love went into this, and if you felt a certain way when something happened, it's because they guided you there with clever techniques and mise-en-scene and other fancy French words. Empire is a must-watch for anyone who wants to make movies and for anyone who wants to get immersed in another world. Return of the Jedi. I love this movie, don't get me wrong, but this is usually regarded as the weakest of the original trilogy, and sadly I have to agree. It's not a bad movie by any means, the entire Act 3 is, in my mind, flawless. The journey of Luke is worth the price of admission alone. It has that same Star Wars feel that you get when you watch the other two movies. But when you compare it to the cinematic blowjob that is Empire Strikes Back, it's easy to see why this film is considered the worst of the best. The whole beginning with Jabba the Hutt was kind of unnecessary. I know we needed to get Han out of the Carbonite, but after they focused 37 minutes on it, the entirety of Act 1, they never mention it again. And it has nothing to do with the rest of the film. Everybody hates the Ewoks too. I, I honestly never minded them. In fact, I think the transaction with the Ewok and Leia is one of my favorite scenes in the entire series. But it's clear that this movie was intended for a younger audience. It wasn't as serious in tone as the last one. Just listen to Yub Nub, the song that was supposed to play at the end. Yub -nub. Yub -nub. 
This is the song that would precede the death of Darth Vader, one of the greatest villains in cinema history. Yub Nub. I think the main character in this movie is Darth Vader. It's all about his slow and gradual shift from the dark side to the light. It's very well done and can be shown without facial expressions or words. I repeat, without words. No. No. That unmasking at the end humanizes him. It's the first time in the whole trilogy that we don't see Vader as this looming and menacing robot, but as a human being that we can relate to, as a father and as a Jedi. Return of the Jedi, I believe not only refers to Luke, but refers to Vader as well. In the end, the Jedi in him returns right before he dies. This is how a shift of tone in a character should be shown. Not because he has a dream, doesn't get a promotion, and then kills a bunch of children. We'll get to that later. Despite its flaws, Return of the Jedi makes up for it with some scenes that knock it right out of the park, like Luke and Vader, the speeder chase, and, and, and who could forget Jabba's palace? No! The entire Star Wars trilogy could be described with this word, good. Then we got the prequels. George Lucas originally made this trilogy of movies for a group of people, mainly kids, and they all loved it, and they were happy they saw it. Then Lucas's thinking was that he was going to make three new movies for a new generation of kids, and they were all going to love it. What he didn't know was that the generation who watched the original movies was still there, and growing and they wanted to see the movies they grew up with. Honestly, whenever there's a video on YouTube that talks about the Star Wars prequels, I always see this comment. This comment. This comment. <sighs> there seems to be this devoted team of fans who seek out any naysayers and fight them tooth and nail. Listen, there's nothing wrong with liking the prequels. And I get it, they're pretty entertaining, and they show off a new side to the universe. But please, this is my opinion. Phantom Menace. I'm not here to bash Phantom Menace, Lord knows enough people have done that. Did I like it? No. No, I didn't like it. It's a whole different ball game than the originals. It's a different world, a different feel, a different vibe, it just feels... different. And that's not a bad thing. In fact, I prefer doing something different, but maybe they strayed a little too much. It's still an entertaining movie. It's a popcorn movie. It's not the cinematic game changer the others were, it was just an alright movie. But is that what Star Wars fans wanted? An alright movie? No, certainly not. The CGI is boring. I guess nobody told George Lucas that when everything is beautiful, nothing is beautiful. This is all boring. I'm not interested in any of this. And honestly, I don't know if this is just me being an idiot, but I didn't get it on a first watch. It took me like five times to really understand what was going on. And even now that I kind of get it, I still don't care because it's just boring. boring. I watched this movie with my brother recently, and at the end he said, and I quote, I don't know who is fighting who and why. And that quote kind of sums up the whole movie for me. It's a lot better if you have that Jar Jar is a Sith leader fan theory in mind. Seriously, go to the top rated post on Reddit and rewatch the movie. It's not the worst movie ever made, not by a long shot. It's just not what fans of Star Wars wanted. Power. Then you got Attack of the Clones. This, in my opinion, is the worst of the entire series. Say what you want about Phantom Menace, but it was still entertaining to a certain extent. It was still the movie equivalent of waving your keys in front of a baby's face. It wasn't boring for the most part. It had more than a few cool scenes. Attack of the Clones is the most dull, boring, tedious, monotonous, repetitive, unrelieved, unvaried, unimaginative, uneventful- I, I don't care. I don't care about any of this. this. This is not Star Wars. This is not creative and fun and cool. This is social studies. There's a bag of luggage in this scene for Christ's sake. It's awkwardly getting everything ready for the next movie and for the originals. It's about hastily turning Anakin into Vader. The effects are ridiculous. Return of the Jedi age better than this. This looks like Bomberman 64. Count Dooku was useless and a complete waste of Sir Christopher Lee. I didn't care about the action. More does not equal good. One thing Phantom Menace kind of did right was the action. It was pretty cool. This is not doing it right. And Star Wars isn't all about the action, I get that. But what else am I supposed to look at in this movie? The acting? The writing? I don't like sand. It's coarse, and rough, and irritating. And it gets everywhere. Not like here. I feel like they could have skipped this movie and been fine. Would anything really be affected if they went straight from Phantom Menace to Revenge of the Sith? Oh god. I'm gonna get a lot of comments, aren't I? I shouldn't have said that. I should not have said that. I shouldn't have said that. I'm sure that there's a large number of devoted fans who love this movie, and that's fine. But I don't think I can sit through it again without having my finger on the fast forward button at all times.
Lastly, you got Revenge of the Sith. This one is... fine. But it's fine comparatively. If this was a standalone movie, I don't know how well it would have been received. It's certainly the best out of the prequels, but that seems to be the general consensus. The action is good, and the music is good. Say what you want about the prequels, they had fantastic scores. Revenge does a better job with getting me to care. Something that I don't think they realized with the last two. Just because you really like your movie doesn't mean everybody else will. I feel like where the other films lacked, this one excels. For the most part. It still has its dumb moments. The writing is still pretty goddamn stupid. You're so beautiful. Someone can have a phone now. No, <laughs> no, it's because I'm so in love with you. So I have a you. The pacing is ridiculous. Characters change emotion on a dime just to fit in with the story. The acting makes it clear that no one really cared that much about this film, with the exception of Ewan McGregor. But it's still a good, entertaining popcorn flick. And sometimes, just sometimes, it feels like Star Wars all over again. Killing younglings. Not Anakin. So somewhere in all the prequels lies one solid Star Wars movie. They're not horrible. I certainly wouldn't call a movie like Phantom one of the worst movies ever made. I think a better word to describe the whole trilogy would be soulless. And that pisses a lot of people off. I understand that George Lucas put an insane amount of love and devotion into his project. If you watch the behind the scenes, you could see it firsthand. It's clear that, if nobody else, he cares. But if these movies weren't called Star Wars, if they were about a young boy's journey from the light side to the dark, would you still revere them? The prequels answer all the questions that I never wanted to know about Star Wars. What is the government like? How exactly does the Force work scientifically? What does Yoda's training class look like? How do you turn into a ghost? If you wanted to know these answers, then you'll probably enjoy these movies, and there's nothing wrong with that. It's just not my cup of tea. I think this quote from Revenge of the Sith describes the prequel trilogy perfectly. If into the security recordings you go, only pain will you find. If into the security recordings you go, only pain you will find. Yoda says that. That That's not magical. That's not mysterious. That's not cool science fiction long time ago in a galaxy far, far away. That's Mission Impossible. And it's the same thing with Metachlorians. There's a reason it pissed so many people off. It's because it's soulless. These movies don't have that original glimmer of light, that certain spark of creativity that the originals did. It's not bad because it's different. It's bad because it forgot why the originals were so loved and it forgot who its original audience is. You wouldn't take something as respected as Zelda and turn it into a spelling game, or take a game like Metroid and turn it into a soccer game. OOPS! And with that, we go to the newest generation of Star Wars. I'll be honest, back in 2012 when it was announced that new Star Wars movies were coming out, I hated the idea. I generally disliked the idea of rebooting a franchise, and Star Wars was no exception. The originals are fine, leave it at that. But as we got closer and promotional materials started coming out for The Force Awakens, I got more and more excited. By the time I saw Han again in the second trailer, I was hooked. Here's my actual reaction to seeing Han. Chewie, we're home. Oh my god! Oh my god! Holy shit! That was awesome! This is the face of a man who's excited for Star Wars. I saw The Force Awakens opening night to a packed out theater. It was an event. It was the best movie going experience of my entire life. It was something I never thought I would see in my lifetime. A new chapter of Star Wars with all the main characters back in action on the big screen. It was special. This was my reaction when the logo appeared. <laughs> and it was ecstasy for the next two hours. I really liked this movie. This film felt like a fresh and welcome addition to the Star Wars saga. It was so much fun. That's the best way to describe this movie, fun. It was interesting, it was never boring. It got me to genuinely care about what was going on. I love the new characters, and I can't wait to see where they're headed in future installments. I love the action, I think the flying scenes and even the lightsaber scenes were all handled very nicely. I love, love, loved the effects. The fact that they tried their damnedest to make it as practical as they could. That alone makes it worth it. However, I still don't understand why they could spend months making all these elaborate and creative costumes just for one shot in the bar scene, but still decide to leave Snoke CGI. If you want to go practical, go practical. It's so clear when something is CGI. Especially when you remind us of what practical looks like. The junkyard dealer was a good example of mixing the two, having the body be an actual handmade costume while the facial expressions were done in post. 
Why couldn't you do that with Snoke? Anyway, this movie was really good. Are there problems? Of course there are. This is not a perfect movie by any means. Remember when I said before that no one liked the prequels because they were too different than the originals? This is kind of the opposite. I understand giving the new movie the same feel as the originals, but it gets ridiculous sometimes. This movie not only hit a lot of the same beats as A New Hope, but it's quite literally a remake. Also, I'm more than fine with fan service, but maybe they overdid it a little bit? While I do love this movie, even I'll admit that it could have been better without this. This is a ship that made the Kessel Run in 14 parsecs. 12! 14. Or this. Or this. What do we do with her? Is there a garbage chute? Trash compactor? Yeah, there is. Or this. <laughs> When did that ever help? And don't say the Death Star. Hey. There are other problems within this movie, but to me, they're all outweighed by the good parts. Like, I don't understand why everyone has a problem with Rey defeating Kylo Ren. Oh, how does she know how to use a lightsaber after picking it up for the first time? Look at her use it! She's not using it right, she's just trying to stab him. And when he says, You need a teacher! I could show you the ways of the Force! It's clear that he's not trying to kill her, he wants her to join him. He can use her. It's not until she lets the Force in that she can best him. Also, Chewie just shot him in the rib like 10 minutes ago. Of course he's not going to be on his A-game. I don't know, I, I thought that was pretty clear. Some people didn't like Kylo Ren as being a whiny little brat teenager. But no, that's Anakin. This is a villain with character. In a Star Wars movie, can you believe it? He has depth, he has problems, he's an actual character. He's what Anakin should have been in the prequels. But I digress. In the end, this, to me, felt like the closest we've been to a proper new Star Wars movie. It's not perfect, but it's pretty damn good. But god damn it, why didn't Leia hug Chewie? Why? He's right there. Why did you go to, to Rey, this girl that you've never met in your entire life, because your husband died? Chewie's like, like his father, and he just died, and you don't... He, He's right there! Like, if, if you guys don't want to hug, then just don't include him. Just, like, cut him out of the shot. There you go, I just did it. Why do you- What- Why didn't she hug you? Now I want to talk about the future of Star Wars. At the time I'm recording this, The Force Awakens is out, and we have a teaser and a trailer for Rogue One. But more movies are coming. Two more movies from the new trilogy are coming, plus spin-off movies. Rogue One, a Han Solo movie, and a Boba Fett movie, supposedly. How do I feel about this? Well, on one hand, it's good that more Star Wars movies are coming out. We want more Star Wars, they're giving us more Star Wars. But on the other hand, is it too much of a good thing? Star Wars is special. It's not just like any other movie. It's not like James Bond or Saw or Pirates of the Caribbean where another one comes out and you're like, yep, there's, there's another one. I don't want franchise fatigue. I don't want to get tired of Star Wars. I've already accepted the new trilogy. I, I kind of like the idea of a new trilogy of movies coming out every 15 years or so. But in between movies just to add to the cinematic universe? To the people who have never seen a Star Wars movie, can it get confusing seeing all these movies coming out? Can the excessive sequels and prequels turn off the general movie going audience? Try explaining Rogue One to someone who's not a fan. Okay, so Rogue One is a, a prequel of the originals. Like the, the first ones that came out. So like it happened before episode 4, and episode 4 was like the first one that came out, so yeah, so like it, it's between the original trilogy and the new trilogy, and it's like, it's it's before the newest one that came out, so like it, it happened like before, cause remember like in the first one, no not that one, like in, in the in the fourth one, my bad, like you remember in the fourth one in the opening crawl it said like, they got the, the Death Star and, and they got the plans for it, this is the movie that shows it, so it's like between episode 3 and 4, no, not not that one. It's I, I'll obviously go see them when they come out. And if you're watching this, you'll probably go see it too. But they need to stick out on their own and be damn good movies. The Han Solo movie can't be two hours of never tell me the odds, kid, and laugh it up, fuzzball. It has to feel like a fresh, original, creative movie. Not a soulless, cash-grab, remember-the-good-old-days fest. I have faith in the new movies, but to me, having a trilogy of anthology films ruins the magic a little bit. The last thing I want to think about Star Wars is... Oh, another one? I'm not crazy about the fact that they're being made, but as long as they are, I might as well go see them. The bottom line is that whatever movie comes out, whatever spin-off, video game, comic book, mouse pad crossover, whatever's canon nowadays, it will never ruin the originals for me. There's something so special and unique about those movies that can never be trumped. And just the fact that one little space movie exploded into a franchise is truly something to behold. Whenever I look back on the first one, that one iconic shot of Luke looking at the binary sunset 
with that unbelievably beautiful John Williams score in the background, that's all I need. That is Star Wars. Star Wars will always be something great. And even if they make a new movie every year until 2050, never forget the originals. Never forget what made Star Wars Star Wars. And never stop celebrating it.